to come on today to just talk about being your own health advocate. Because let me tell you the story of how I found out that I had Hashimoto's and how like I went from not feeling great and kind of not being heard to being my own health advocate and really starting to feel great. So back in 2006, I had just completed my second Ironman triathlon, which is the crazy triathlon where you do a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a full on marathon at the end. I had been training for that for an entire year and you get tired in those things, right? But I did that in September and by January, February, I was still really, really tired all the time. Like just, I could not move. And so I went to go see my doctor, who at the time was my family care practitioner, just a regular Western medical doctor. And I told him I was feeling this way. And I thought maybe I had mono or something. He examined me and took some blood and told me he would call me in a few days. A few days later, I got a phone call, told me to come in, and he let me know the news that I had what he called hypothyroid. Now this was brand new news to me. Like I had no idea what this meant. I thought I was super healthy. I mean, I just got done an Ironman, right? And I ate so perfectly because I had heart healthy whole grains and drank low fat milk and did all of the things that you know, you're supposed to do. I remember asking my doctor, well, like, so what does this mean? And he said, well, it just means your thyroid's not working correctly. And we're gonna just have to put you on medication for the rest of your life. And I said, well, how did this happen? And he goes, well, we're not really sure. We know it's autoimmune in nature, but nobody really knows how it starts or why it starts or anything like that. There's just nothing you can really do. All you gotta do is just be on this medication and we'll have to check you every so often just to make sure you're at the right levels. And I remember leaving there kind of in shock because like I said, I thought I was super healthy. And I, you know, just the fact that I had something wrong with me, first of all, like there was that whole process of grief and kind of, questioning and a lot of different things at that point. And I had really no idea what it all meant for me. I, I knew some other people that had hypothyroid as well. And they just said, oh, I just take the medication and that's it. And like, they just kind of were resigned to that. So I figured, oh, that's what I gotta do too. But then over the years, like things never really got that much better. I mean, the, the fatigue was mainly gone. I mean, it would come back and it was always there at some level, but it wasn't like it was when I first went in but I was always the most cold person in the room. I'd always have cold hands and feet. My hair would be falling out, brittle nails. I mean, all of the classic thyroid symptoms. And I would go to my doctor and say, I'm not feeling well, I'm tired, or any of these number of like, symptoms that would come up. And he would say, well, let's test you again. And sometimes my TSH level would be high. So I'd be hyperthyroid at the time. So they would lower my medication. And sometimes I would be low. So they would raise the medication up. This is just how it went month after month for about eight years of my life. There were a few times I went in there and I told him I was so tired and he said, well, we can't really raise your medication any higher because your TSH is in the perfect level. And if we raise it any higher, then you're gonna be at risk for osteoporosis and a number of other things. So we have to keep you where you are. So you're just gonna basically have to live with being tired. And there were other times I went in there and I was like, describe some of the symptoms and he was like, yeah, I, you know, I think they're probably in your head. They're, you know, they're, they're not really anything to be worried about. But you know, like my quality of life kind of sucked for that. You know, I just wasn't feeling right. I wanted to feel good, but there was nothing that they could apparently do. So it wasn't until 2014 when I got so bad with the fatigue and everything was just kind of crashing down around me that I went and I saw a functional medicine practitioner and he helps me discover that I actually had Hashimoto's, that it was indeed an autoimmune disease and then I could put it potentially into remission. And so through the diet and lifestyle changes I made and through help with him with supplementation and some other things that he did, I got into remission and I felt better than I had in over 15 years. So now I know that I have to look out for me. So yes, my functional medicine practitioner is awesome and I'm so thankful that he is in my life and that I can rely on him. However, he's not looking out for me on a 24 by seven basis. I'm the only one who's looking out for me on a 24 by seven basis. Even my husband who loves me and everything can't look out for me all the time, right? You're the only one who really does and the one who really cares about your own health. You are the one who is responsible for yourself. So you need to figure out what works best for you, what kind of tests you need, what kind of things are gonna make you feel better, what are gonna make you feel worse, all of these different things. This is being your own health advocate. 
you ha can have people that are on your team, like me, like a health coach, would be someone that would help you figure out the fastest, easiest path to health and keep you accountable and make sure that you're doing things that you need to be doing. And then you can have practitioners that are working on certain aspects of your life, like you may have an acupuncturist that's gonna work on you, and then also your family medicine practitioner that helps with all the overall stuff, the testing and all of that kind of stuff. You can have a team but the team is still going to not be accountable for you. You have to be accountable for you. So what does this mean? Well, I mean, first of all, this is an interesting discussion that we were actually having today in my autoimmune paleo coaching certification course about how everyone knows what kind of gasoline they need to put in their own car, but do you really know what kind of food you really need to make yourself nurse as possible? So first of all, you need to figure out what kind of foods really work for you and what don't work for you. You need to figure out what test may be what is appropriate for you to figure out if you need to know like blood profiles or if you need to know if you have certain allergies at the moment to something. Getting diagnoses on autoimmune diseases or any other kind of chronic symptoms or anything in your life are very important and can help you really navigate the path towards health. Finding doctors that are open-minded and are willing to work with you when you eat a diet that is maybe different than the mainstream diet is something that can be great. Figuring out other alternative ways to make yourself healthy, like going to yoga, Pilates, or meditation, finding a meditation coach, I and mean, just any of these things. Like, again, finding a team of people to like help you really try to be your best. Reading books can be a great way on nutrition. Like uh, Sarah Ballantyne has some great ones on the paleo diet. The Paleo Principles book is this huge, giant tome, but it's full of great information. Or if you want to like about autoimmune disease, uh, her book, The Paleo Approach is, I mean, it delves deep into the science, but you really will understand what's happening to you if you read that. You probably read manuals, unless you're a guy, you probably don't read manuals, but <laughs> you may read manuals on how to use your, I don't know, brand new TV or computer or something, but do you read a manual on yourself? Which one's gonna be around longer? Also, don't be afraid to ask questions of your doctor or whoever else. Be prepared that you may get somewhat of a condescending response sometimes. It's a little annoying, but just take a deep breath and be confident and ask your question. If they are condescending to you, then just take what they say and move on. But sometimes you may find that they are open to the discussion and may not even know that a test is important or that there is an alternative way of making this happen. If you are suffering from autoimmune disease and you've read countless accounts of how all of these people have put their autoimmune disease into remission via diet and lifestyle, bring some examples of that to your appointment. I've actually brought in copies of the books that I've been reading to my doctor before and showed him. And he, while he was a little not sure about it, he's like, huh, maybe I'll take a look at this. Did he? I have no idea. But at least he seemed kind of open-minded about taking an approach that may not necessarily line up with what he already knew. Just the more evidence that you can bring in makes it not so anecdotal and maybe they will pay attention a little bit more. And you may even be surprised because I actually went to a doctor's appointment once for my kids and the nurse there was talking to us about the diet that I had my son on, which was GAPS at the time. And I explained why I was doing it. And she, like, you could see a light bulb went off in her head. And I mean, she's a nurse, but she's like, wow, I really need to try that because I have the exact same symptoms. So you never know. It's just important things to think about. So. I just want to encourage you to think about being your own health advocate and really kind of trying to discover the things that are going to make you feel your healthiest. And just to remember to not rely on other people. You can use them for support, but don't rely on them. You have to really do this for yourself.